What's up my friends, welcome back. Yes, I'm growing my beard lately, even this is not No Shave November. But anyway, today we have another review on this channel and this will be another portable soldering iron from Miniware. And this is the new version, the TS80 version P. Because as you remember, I already have the TS80 and I've been using this for months, maybe even years, I can't remember. And this is right now my main soldering iron. At first I wasn't using it uh, that much, but I get tired of using the soldering station because it's very bulky, it's very big and it will occupy a lot of space on my workshop table. So I decided to use this one and I'm only using my soldering station when I have to reflow something because it has a hot air gun. Anyway, today we'll make a review of this new version and as you remember, these products are a little bit pricey so you'll be the judge of that. You'll decide if you to, to buy this or not. So we'll make the review, I'll make an unbox, see what we have inside, make a small test, tell you the new specification of this new product and then I will give you my final opinion. So guys, make sure that you subscribe and activate that notification bell in order to see my future projects. Thank you very much for supporting me here on YouTube and also my Patreon account. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. So let's just start this uh, review of this new version of the TS-80P. Let's start with a quick unbox. So let me just put this old version aside and let's open the box. First of all, as you can see here, it can reach 400 degrees. It works at 12 volts and it has 30 watts. So the old version was 18 watts, so this is 12 watts uh, more powerful. So let's just open the box, let's see what we have inside. This is the first time I'm opening this. As you can see, we have two boxes. The first one is with the unit and with the, with the tip, as you can see here. So we have the unit and the tip. And on the other side, I think that we have the charger, I mean the, the DC adapter and the cable. So let's see first what we have here. We have an Allen key. This is the ground cable. So we will use this to ground ourselves in case that you that you want to work uh, with electro electronics that are powered on. So we will screw this in place. It will have a screw, at, I think, as the old one. You'll screw, you will screw this cable here and use it to grind yourself. Okay, so let's see what more we have. This is the power cable and as you remember, this is made out of silicone and this is resistant to temperature. I've tried to burn this out and it uh, will make a test later. So I've tried to burn it and it won't burn because this will uh, this will take up to 400 or 500 degrees for a short uh, period of time, of course. So this will be very helpful if you, for, uh, for mistake, you touch this, so you won't burn it. Okay, so we have the cable made out of silicon and the DC adapter. Oh, and this is the model for US, but I think, yes, this is a 240 volts, uh, so we won't have problem to use this. And I already prepared here uh, an adapter because the other model was as well the model, the, the old one, was always for US, so I had this prepared for a test. So we will use that. You, the, the adapter is not included in the package when you receive it, so make sure that you buy this. This is like $1. I bought this in a Chinese store. And we have a short manual, I think, which is of course in English and Chinese. It will tell you the parts of the unit, the power, the voltage, and that's it. So this is what we have inside the power adapter, we have the cable for grounding ourselves, we have an Allen key, the cable, the power cable, which is made out of silicone, and the unit. And this here, I'm not sure how to open this. I think uh, I don't want to break this. Okay, so we open this sideways. So I, I'm, I'm guessing that once you open this, you won't be closing it back. But anyway, so there you have it. You have the unit, the soldering tip and the rest of the components. So now I'll tell you the specification. I have here a sheet with all the data for the soldering iron and then we'll make a test and I'll give you my final opinion. Okay guys, so let's get with the specs. First of all, this will have the same temperature range. It will get from 100 degrees to 400 degrees Celsius, which is the same as the, as the old version. It has an input of 12 volts and at 12 volts it will draw 2.5 amps, which is the maximum current. So that will equal to a power of 30 watts, which is 12 watts more than the TS-80. Remember the TS-80 had a power of uh, 18 watts. So I'm pretty sure this will be a lot faster. As I have here, faster heating time, 
from room temperature to 300 degrees it will take around 8 seconds and we will test that uh, later in this video. Also it has the data and power interface a USB Type-C which is the same as the, the other version but as you remember USB Type-C USB type could take a lot of power so that's why we could use this at 30 watts and also you can use the same input as the data, the data input and by that all I want to say is that if you want to flash the new firmware you can use the same USB input so just connect the cable to your PC get the new version and flash that to your to your device in this case I'm pretty sure this is the last version but if you have an older one just get a new version from their website uh, you connect the USB cable and flash the, the firmware to the new unit anyway let's see more what more we have we have an OLED display for me this is a little bit small but it's enough to see the temperature and the settings I think it's like two centimeters wide and tall maybe eight millimeters which is quite enough we have the length of the controller is 97, 96 millimeters and the length of the tip is uh, 100 millimeters. It is made out of aluminum, it's not that heavy, just uh, 38 grams, but it feels very good quality. So it's made out of metal and the design just looks good. And as you can see here, this is one of the main differences between the, the new one and the old one. Is this tip remover here, as you can see this one uh, is moving and the old version does not, uh, it won't move. So this is used if you want to take out the tip and maybe this is, uh, this is hot. All you have to do is just put it, push it out and you can take it out a lot easier, uh, easier. So that's why we use this. And of course, maybe one of the most important part for this product is the price. You can find this, find this at around 70 euros, which will be maybe 80 dollars. So it is a little bit price, uh, pricey compared with other soldering, portable soldering irons, but that's what you get. You get a, li a little bit more quality and that's why you, can, you have to pay a little bit more. Okay, so now if we compare the new one with the old one, I have a table here. They, they are both made out of, out of aluminum. They are CNC milled and they, they have a black color. They both use USB Type-C connection, but the input, input power for one is just QC 3.0 and the other one has QC 3.0 which is the USB Type-C and also the PD 2.0 and the working voltage from the old one is 9 volts and 2 amps so 18 watts and the new one has an input of uh, 20 volts and at 3 amps it will equal to around 30 watts of power so the difference of power is of 12, uh, 12 uh, watts the temperature is the same it will go from 100 to 400 degrees and the heating time is different. The heating time for the old version was uh, 18 seconds from room temperature to 300 degrees. And for the new one, from room temperature to 300 degrees is around 8 seconds. What more do we have? The soldering tip resistance uh, to ground is 2 ohms, but that might be different depending on the tip that you buy. And also the control size is a little bit uh, bigger. And also the weight is a little bit bigger as well. The old one weighted uh, 36 grams. And this new one is just 38 grams so two more grams two more grams for the new one what other functions well we have the same functions but we do have now a port protection so i'm guessing that the port here has more protection against maybe reversed input polarity or maybe too much power i'm not sure what protection is this one but it has a port protection and the other functions are slip mode so when you don't use it it will enter automatically into slip mode we have, we have the auto cutoff, so it will power off automatically. We have the customized booting logo, so if you want to flash a new firmware with your own logo, it will print that on the OLED display. And we also have the firmware upgrade, which is pretty obvious. So this was the specs, uh, these were the specs of this uh, new version. Let's make a quick test and then I will tell you my, uh, my opinion about this product. Okay guys, so the first test that I will do right now is the speed test, so let me just connect it and I will put a timer and let's see how much time it will take to get to 300 degrees. So we take the cable, the cable, we plug it here. I take my adapter because this is the US type, okay, just plug it in here, take the unit, I connect the tip. Okay, so right now let me make sure that uh, you can see this. When I press heating, I will press the starting, the timer. So as you can see, we are now to 200 degrees, almost 300, and 300 in around eight seconds. So yes, this was true in around eight in around eight seconds. You can get to 300 degrees, and of course, I can know for sure if the tip is at 300 degrees because for that I should measure this with an external thermocouple. But I'm pretty sure it will get up to 300 degrees because I've already tested the old version. 
and this get to uh, 300 degrees in around 15 seconds and if this uh, will have the double the power and I'm pretty sure it will get to in 8 seconds to 300 degrees. Okay, so let's test uh, for more stuff. Okay, so the first thing that I will do is to try to make a huge ball of solder here on this PCB. Let me just increase the temperature a little bit, maybe to 350. Okay, so now the temperature is rising. So let's just try to solder here a big ball of solder. Let's see if it can, it can handle it. And yes, it can take it with no problems. As you can see, there is a lot of solder in there, but even so it has the power to keep it all melted. As you can see, even if I have a huge ball of solder, it will melt that with no problems. Okay, so let's make the next test. Okay, so right now here I have a huge PCB which will dissipate a lot of the heat. So let me tr just try to make another ball of solder in the middle here and let's see if it can handle it. We just hit the board first. We add the solder. This is a bit tricky now because the ball of solder will get hard sometimes but it can handle it with no problems because if the last version could handle this this will be even better with 30 watts so as you can see I have a lot of solder here and the PCB is very big so it will dissipate a lot of the heat but even so we can solder a lot of uh, solder here let's just try now to solder a component of MOSFET to this PCB so here I have a MOSFET Soldering this MOSFET is a bit more difficult because now both the PCB and the MOSFET will uh, dissipate the heat. So I'm not even sure if I will be able to do this. Yes, even so, as you can see now the entire solder is melted and I'm able to solder the MOSFET to the PCB. I'll just make a zoom right now to, so for you to see. Okay, so here we have it. As you can see, I've zoomed in and as you can see the component is well soldered in place. And the entire, sold, the entire ball of solder is, was melted and the component is fixed in place. Oh, and by the way, I almost forgot we had to test the cable if we can burn this because as I told you, this is made out of heat resistive, heat resistive silicone. So let's just make a test. As you can see, I'm touching this with uh, the soldering iron at 350 degrees. So as you can see, I'm trying to burn this, but uh, there's nothing happen. Let me just make a zoom to the camera. As you can see, I'm touching it but there is nothing happen and the iron is at 350 degrees. Okay, so it's pretty obvious that this new version has a lot more power and as for my final opinion, well, yes, it is a little bit pricey, but it's a very good quality solder, so I recommend it. If you have the money, just buy this because it, you will have it for a lot more time. It's made out of metal. The tip is very, very good quality. It will heat up very fast, but there are some parts that I don't like and that's one of the parts is that uh, I don't have a holder for this. So you, when you place it on the table, since this is round, it will roll around as you can see. So it won't have a support. Usually this will, came with a, this will uh, arrive with a support, but this doesn't have one. Actually, the last tip for my first version, that was the cause that I break uh, the tip. That was the cause that I had to buy a new one. As you can see, this one is break here, and that's because I had the soldering, the soldering iron on my table, and since it doesn't have a support, it fell off and break the tip. So I had to buy a new one, and luckily now, now we have a lot of the, these tips. So you can buy any shape that you want for maybe 10 or $15. So without the support, maybe you'll have to make one of metal, or maybe you will buy some of this clean, cleaning sponge that already has a support for the soldering iron, and use that for a few more dollars, but anyway. Uh, we don't have a support and that's a part that I don't like about this soldering iron. But the rest is great. The speed is awesome. In just uh, 8 seconds you can get to 300 degrees and start soldering components. It uses a USB connection so uh, you can even use this with a power bank so this will be portable. It has a lot more power than the other version and the price, yes, it is a little bit high, 70 euros. But even so, this is a good quality, so I really recommend it. And if we go into settings, let's just see what we have here. We have heating, we go to settings, the wake up temperature, we have the standby temperature, the sleep time in 180 seconds, I think. We have the power right now is fixed to 34. I'm not sure if that is correct, 34 watts. The temperature standby point, the off voltage, the temperature in degrees, the hand, you can change it for right hand or left handed. And you have a lot of settings here that you could change and you even have the input voltage right now it's 12 volts 
and that's it. So guys, this is pretty much all I had to say about this soldering iron because it, there is not much to say, it's just a soldering iron. And we've uh, compared it with the old version and as you can see, it has a lot more power. It has double the power actually. The tips uh, are the same, you can now remove it easily. You have the same input for the USB Type-C. It, uh, it is made out of metal, you can get up to 400 degrees and it will reach uh, 300 degrees in 8 seconds or even less. So I really recommend it, you have links below if you want to buy it. And yes, it is a little bit uh, expensive, but that will be your decision. Thank you very much guys, I hope that you like this video and that uh, you now have a main idea of this uh, product in order for you to decide if, you, if to buy it or not. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much and keep up you guys!